Last time on Out Chasing Stars, we celebrated being done with the Indian Ocean by ignoring boat life for a while and enjoying Cape Town. My brother had flown in, so we all went up to the Kalahari Transfrontier Park for a true African safari experience. This was a legitimate desert, raw and absolutely beautiful. Time keeps ticking though, and already some boats were moving on. We still had a lot of projects to accomplish before it was our turn to set off across the Atlantic. Now that my brother has departed Cape Town, it is time for us to do all the projects so that we can hopefully depart Cape Town in a reasonable amount of time. One of the big projects on my list is to replace our port alternator, which has been outputting about half of what it should have. So Outback Marine, the guys who designed our system uh, in Australia when we did our lithium upgrade, have we've done some testing, they've replaced the alternator out of warranty. I'm also going to be adding a new external regulator for this alternator because previously the two had been sharing one. So I have been working up a junction box with a new regulator and a couple switches and circuit breaker and all that stuff. I've been running wiring. Uh, I've got lots of projects all coming together right now. Gonna hopefully wire everything in, fire up the alternator, and test and see how it's working. Got the new regulator all wired in. Looks pretty good. The other thing I need to do is uh, these are actually programmable. So I can adjust the absorption value, the bulk charging, the float value uh, for our lithium batteries, which is nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done today. We'll test, fire everything up, see if the out alternators are outputting what they should be. Programming the regulator requires the use of a magnet and lots of patience as the menu options take a while to cycle through. This was a pretty complex operation, but with the help of the manual, I eventually got it all figured out. It took a little while longer than I would have liked with all the other projects going on to actually test this port alternator, but it looks as though the new alternator and the regulator are performing exactly as I was hoping. So, um, that means I managed to do a project right on the first try. I honestly can't believe it. Uh, it feels pretty good. We're just gonna have to make sure it actually holds out while we're crossing the Atlantic. So we'll focus on the other projects we've got left. Uh, Amy's uncle is flying in soon to visit us. He's gonna be joining us on the sail to St. Helena. So we wanna try to wrap up as much as we can before he gets here. While I was busy with the alternator, Amy had her own set of projects to work on. One project was inflating and testing all three of our deck vests in preparation for crossing the Atlantic. The inflatable jackets all passed muster, but the lights needed to be replaced. That's very bright. Very, very bright. Sun damage was destroying the curtains hanging in our cabins, so Amy also replaced the lining and plastic hooks that held the curtains up. That included having to file the plastic down to get them to fit in the existing track. A true example of boat engineering. Replacing the broken vents to the engine room made Starry Horizons look shiny and new, while servicing the winches made her feel very loved. We took off some of the panels from our enclosure and had stitches repaired by a local canvas shop, and Amy cleaned our water line though she always had to keep an eye out for our favorite dock neighbors. Don't worry, it wasn't all work and no fun for the Admiral. When our friends Margo and Luke invited us to go diving in False Bay, she gladly said yes.
After diving, it was back to work. Some projects we outsourced, like rebedding the whole windows with a proper sealant to finally prevent black streaks, and others we did ourselves, even if they were a major pain. What are you working on there? I am cleaning our props and prepping them for a new round of prop speed. Yeah, these are the ones that um, managed to stay on the boat during the Mozambique <laughs> channel, huh? Yeah. So, uh, when was the last time Prop Speed was put on? Thailand? Thailand, a little About over a year, year ago. ago. Yeah, so. We're, uh, we're ready to be super fast crossing the Atlantic. <laughs> I like the way you think. <laughs> we had thought long and hard about going with a different brand of props, but in the end, decided we didn't want to have to pay for two new ones. Amy took charge of the sanding, and for the first time, we applied the prop speed ourselves. I was responsible for the install and documented every single step so we can prove a proper job was done. With the help of my lovely assistant, we got our props back up and running in no time. That meant one headache was taken care of, but there was another big one still on the to-do list. We have finally gotten our new escape hatches. It has taken a month to get them out of customs here in South Africa. It's been a bit of a saga. Um, my blood pressure rises every time I think about it, so uh, I'm gonna link down below to a blog post where we talk about a little more details. But, we have our new escape hatches. The old ones are out. We're putting the new ones in so we can feel a little more secure that uh, we won't be having any leaks or stuff like that as we are crossing the Atlantic, which I'm pretty excited about. Most footage of the install contains a lot of four letter words. So let's just say it really sucked and move on. It is a very exciting day today. We have been working super hard on getting our hydro generator ready to install. Uh, we made up this beautiful looking bracket, which is gonna be installing on the transom step back there. And now we've got uh, the challenge of actually getting it, getting it in place. We've got some big backing plates made up. Um, the hull is just a little bit curved. So what we're going to do is I've got a bunch of wax all on these backing plates and the washers and stuff that we're going to be using. We're going to be mixing up a little epoxy putty with some filler to try to give it a little bit of a body to it. We'll be putting that on the back of the backing plates. That'll smooth up against the hull, giving it a nice flat surface to um, you know, apply pressure against. And the wax is hopefully that the epoxy won't stick to the metal, and thus if we ever need to disassemble this whole thing, we can do that in the future. Drilled all the holes, Everything's ready to go. Double checked everything about 20 times. <laughs> I think Amy, you hear me laughing. It's probably 25 to be honest. So we're ready to install. We're gonna cross our fingers and hope the next thing we show you is a, a nice bracket in place. After running out of fuel on the way to Seychelles, I got rather paranoid about fuel consumption. The hydro generator has really helped and I'm quite pleased with how the install turned out. Finally, projects were winding down, but the winds were picking up, making it undesirable to leave. We even saw a top wind speed of 46 knots in the marina. Plus, we still had one very important thing to do, hike up Table Mountain. You look kind of happy not to be on the boat right now. I am pretty happy. Uh, we're not on the boat, we're not doing boat projects today, and we are climbing Table Mountain. The one thing you wanted to do in Cape the Town, The one huh? thing I wanted to do. We've been here a month, and we're looking at leaving soon, so we're finally getting up to do it. All right, well, we chose a good day for it, because let's take a look at that. Wow.
how's it going so far? It's good, it's a hard hike. It's basically stairs, stone stairs, but the view is super rewarding, even with this low fog. So from the boat, we've been able to see Signal Hill and Lion's Head and Table Mountain, like the whole line at Table Mountain. So it's pretty amazing to see it from this view now. Yeah, let's, let's uh, pan over and take a look. <clears throat> Definitely got that fog out there, but it is gorgeous. You guys have to like smile and wave because I'm gonna put this in the video. So. We got an expert here. Yeah. How many times have you done this? I've done it quite a lot since 2010. Um, we've done a couple now. of, yeah, People nine, ten years, years, eh? Ten years. So we've been ten doing years. a couple of challenges, and this is my buddy yeah. Emilio. Yeah. We got him into it. So we do Platter Club Challenge, which is now changed to Charity Challenge. Yeah, we do yeah. some Three Peaks. We do Man, UTC that's, that's a lot of hiking up and, up and down here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Whoa, no. And we actually try and do this every weekend. So oh. next time I'll give you the camera and you can take it out. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. We'll do that. I love that. That's great stuff, guys. Cheers. I hope guys. you guys are enjoying our mountain, hey, because oh, the weather is perfect boy. and the climb is perfect. It's gorgeous. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. like we finally made it all the way to the top. We did, we made it up to the top. The view is excellent, like the clouds are adding to the drama, um, but there's definitely like a hole in the clouds around us. So on the other side we can see the city and here we can see the ocean and it's perfect. Well worth the effort? Totally worth the effort. Took us about mm, two hours. All right, high five. Good job. With Table Mountain checked off the list and Amy's Uncle Jim on board as our third crew member, we were ready to tackle our last ocean crossing of our circumnavigation. Hey y'all, thanks for watching our last video in South Africa. We love South Africa, absolutely love Cape Town, it is awesome. We wanted to tell you a little bit about the Cable Way Charity Challenge, which was mentioned in the video on climbing Table Mountain. So that is when for 12 hours in one day, runners fundraise money for charities by going up and down the mountain as many times as they can. So for that guy to talk about doing the charity challenge for 10 years in a row and training every weekend on Plattacook Gorge is amazing. The Cable Way Charity Challenge raises over a million rand a year for charities, so definitely check it out. If you happen to be in Cape Town around April, you might want to do it yourself. We're going to have a link down below. Next week, we'll see y'all as we sail across the South, uh, South Atlantic and go to St. Helena Island, a little tiny remote island in the middle of nowhere. See you then.